Welcome to Ty Romper's No Limit Podcast. Thank you guys so much for joining Ty Romper's No Limit Podcast. This is episode number 22. We are super pumped today, guys. This is a man right here that was on the podcast previously with a dad's uh, roundtable discussion. We loved him so much. We, we begged him to come back. We got him to come back today to share a lot more of his wisdom. This is a man that is redefining what marriage should look like. A man that is an intentional father, husband, and teaches other, other men how to become a romantic hall of famer and light that marriage on fire again. This is a man that's an author of the Ultimate Valentine Week book. This is a brother and a friend of mine, a guy that I admire so much. Heath, welcome to back to the podcast, brother. You're the first two-time guest coming on, man. So thank you very much. Tyler, thank you so much for the invite. I appreciate you, man. For anybody who, who doesn't know you, I know you were on a little bit before, but can you just give us a quick rundown, man, of, of kind of who you are, what you're about, my brother? Yeah. Um, yeah, my name is Heath. I live here in Texas, and I've been married for 23 years. I have uh, three teenagers, and I have literally led thousands of guys. I've been in men's ministry, men groups, and so I've led guys from ages 18, you know, to 50 some years old. Um, I have a passion for guys to totally grow in their passion for their wife. I believe marriage is the closest thing to heaven here on planet earth. The problem is there's so many guys that are living a hell, they're li actually living a hell on earth in their marriage. So I try to coach, inspire, build up, and pretty much try to model the way trying to show guys, here's how you can have a thriving marriage. You don't have to exist, but you literally can go from mountaintop to mountaintop during your 30, 40, 50, 60 years on earth with your spouse. Man, that, that is amazing, man. Yeah, you're one of my favorite people on Twitter. I make it a point to get to your page every day, man. You're sharing some fire tips with everybody. A couple things to unpack there. Number one, I knew I loved you, man, for, for first time, but you're from Texas. That makes sense. Everybody I've ever met from Texas the nicest people, they just want to help everybody. It's just something in the air there, man. I got, I got to get to Texas soon. <laughs> Come on and visit. I'm on the eastern, eastern border of Texas. All right. I got you, man. I'm going to hit up Texas soon. I'm, I'm going to hit you up. So, you know what? I guess I asked this question because I've kind of been on both sides of that circle. I, I was in a marriage where, man, I, it was draining on me. I felt like I was walking on eggshells. I know my wife was in the same boat and, and it was pretty terrible, to be honest, for a while. And then to get on that other side of that now and to feel like, man, I have a teammate, someone in my corner, that, that someone that I build up every day, that she builds me up every day. It's, it's two different existences, almost two different lives. Were you ever in that first corner or did you kind of have this figured out early on or was it a light bulb moment or, or where did you come about in that? No, I figured it out um, from the very beginning. I come from a rich heritage of godly families. Um, my dad's side, my grandparents, they just passed away two years ago, but they were married 75 years. My parents married uh, 57 years. Wow. On my mom's side and her parents, there's literally been no divorce. There hasn't been a documented divorce above my parents. Now, they're, um, some of their siblings, they got you know, involved in divorce and so forth. So I have just grown up with godly heritage, godly thriving uh, marriages. And I have, um, again, people poured into my life. I had so many rich marriages, not financially, but as far as health wise, that it showed me the way, showed me the, the level of forgiveness that's needed, showed me the level of pursuit that is needed. Um, I have been around so many authors that just provoked into me what a marriage can look like. For myself as a believer, I believe my marriage is the reflection of my relationship with God. And so I've been trying to, trying to always emulate that in my life. Um, everything that's good in my life I literally give the credit to leaders of my life, people that have um, showed me the way, authors that have showed me the way. And so I am literally always asking people, um, what, what are you doing with your wife? You know, tell me what you're doing with your husband. How are you guys, you know, the whole best practices. So I'm a constant just learner. And then when I learn, I implement. I implement immediately. So I have a no number of notebooks, you know, kind of a tip sheets of what to do. And so it's been the grace of God that my wife and I, again, we don't have fights. You know, we, we, we just don't have fights. Uh, we may have disagreements, but never argument, never fight, no put down. We don't use the word always. We don't all, you know, say, you don't do, no, we don't, we don't do that. Um, we treat others better than ourselves. And um, one of my convictions is uh, I'm never going to treat my boss better than my wife. I'm never going to try to please a colleague more than my wife. And that's one of the ideas that guys struggle with. They come to work and they know they have to man up right? They got to put their best foot forward. 
they don't take that same idea into their marriage. And that's one of the reasons they fail is they literally have the wrong idea. And so many guys walk around with these debilitating ideas that we're just trying to survive instead of thrive, right? Like right now, my kids, they love the Olympics and we're watching all of these people that are world-class. They have been perfecting their, their discipline since like ages four and six. And that's why there's millions of us watching them, cheering them on, telling them they can go for it. Imagine if us guys had the idea that you are in training to do the same thing with your wife. You want to get a gold medal. Like you can't take a day off. And so many guys, they take the day off. And that's why kind of maybe your previous story, Tyler, you took too many days off and you weren't world-class anymore, right? right? You are all about you. You know, and Olympians, they can't drink. They can't overeat. They have to be in the gym every single day. Man, if guys can have that idea, they'll have a thriving marriage. That's that's powerful. Wow, I resonate with so much what you said too. And I want to I want to hit on one big point and then get hit another one. But but our best energy going to work. Do you think society kind of because pro- when I got married, it was almost to me like okay, well I got the girl, we got the house. Now it's just my job to kind of provide, right? And 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 I lost to be very honest. I didn't put my wife first. Um, I, I put friends my boss, coworkers, my family. I mean, I'm in shame to say a lot of these things, but that's why our marriage was crumbling because she got my leftovers from everything else. And so I didn't really understand that for a while. Why, why do you think that is? And why do you think so many guys struggle with that? And then how do you kind of help them flip that mindset of you got to give your best energy to your life and nothing's more important than that relationship? I think inside of almost every guy is a little bit of competition and a little bit of results oriented. And so even on Twitter, you know, when I'm on Twitter, I go to a number of spaces and whenever people talk about money, those things have 40, 50, 70, 80, hundred people listening, kind of a couple hundred people. But whenever I go to a relationship space, there's like 10, 15, 20 people. <laughs> and the reason is guys is what you said. They have conquered the mountain of their wife. And so now they want to go conquer the mountain of crypto, go conquer the mountain of business, go conquer the mountain of their, you know, whatever it might be. And so when I talk to guys, I'm like, your wife is a mountain, but there's a million trails around that mountain. So you're going to try to get to the peak in her life at 22. Good job. Then there's another trail for age 23 and then another trail for age 24. And every peak, every um, trail going up to that peak is completely different. And so as a guy, I'm trying to constantly conquer her. Same thing when you talked about culture, trying to give you your best in the workplace. If you work in an organization, there's at any point you can be fired. At any point, you don't do the production, you don't do the results, you don't get the numbers, you can be fired. If guys would have that same image in their wife, at any time, your wife can fire you. So my wife, I'm bringing my best every single day. I'm bringing the heat, the energy, the creativity. I'm bringing the money, I'm bringing the provision, I'm bringing the leadership because she could fire me at any time. Now, there is that bad idea. It sounds like a good idea. My wife is committed to me. And commitment is literally the basis of relationship. But as a guy, you can think, well, she's committed to me. And so she's with me 30, 40, 50, 60 years. And so that causes you to be lazy. That causes you to be passive because she wouldn't leave me. You know, she's a good woman, comes from a good family. And then that causes you guys to be passive because you've already conquered her. You got the commitment. And now you want to go get the car. You want to go maybe work on your body. You want to have a world-class body. What about having that world-class marriage instead? And so that's why these bad ideas that try to flow into you, you have to recognize those things and divert them. Instead of allowing that stream to come into your life, you go and allow that stream to go into the poison land. And I'm just having life giving stuff. And the life giving stuff, I'm going to keep conquering her. And again, I'm going to make her number one. That's awesome. And I really feel like, you know, once I started to shift my mindset and put my wife number one, and not just say, yep. you're, you're the most important thing in my life, but to show her. And, you know, we didn't go on a date for, for, two and a half, three years, probably, you know, um, mm-hmm. and then to start to prioritize that and prioritize her and plan fun things and keep pursuing her all the time. Once I put her first, it, it's just a, like a flip. It's like a magic switch, man. It's like, uh, that's all she really wanted was to know mm-hmm. all the time that I was continuing to pursue her, that I didn't just put her on the back burner, take her yes. for granted and say, you know what? I got her. I got her. <laughs> but, but I love how you kind of say that to keep pursuing her. What, what are some ways that you do that Heath? that you kind of keep that going, even after, how long have you been married again? Uh, 23 years. Congratulations, my man. That's awesome. Oh, yes. So what, uh, what tips can you share with us along the way? Some, some fun stuff that you guys do and, and keep it PG here if we can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so 
again, think about for those of you guys that work in an organization, uh, when you come back home, you've worked probably eight, nine hours a day, and you may have given your best there in the organization. But again, your wife deserves the best. So whether your wife is a stay at home mom or she has a job, when you come back home, you reset yourself in the car. And again, you think about what you're going to do. So for me, we have three kids. When my kids were small, when I'd come home, you know, I'd open the door and like, daddy, you know, they would do that. I went straight to my wife. I wanted them to always know mommy's number one in my life. Now that they're teenagers, they don't do this anymore. Of course, they don't come to me, but I go to her. So that's one of the first things you guys do is you're bringing world-class energy. Forget the tiredness, forget the fatigue. The first 15 to 30 minutes, man, engage with your wife, have a great conversation, go for a walk. And then if you need some downtime, you know, you can go sit on the deck or whatever. But first is your wife right there. So bring that energy in there. The other thing is um, most of you guys that have a business, you have a business plan. And if you have a business plan, you have one, three, five year quarterly goals. Uh, you guys need to have a romance plan. All right. So I have a romance plan that is based off quarterly goals, goals, you know, six months, a year. And I have broken it down based off my wife's love language. So if you guys haven't had her take a love language test, you need to go ahead and do that. And so your wife, it'll have from one to five. You know, my wife's number one love language is quality time. That's and mine so too. My yep. wife. Yep. <laughs> so you go ahead and break down what you're going to do. Um, so one thing I encourage you guys to do is to have your wife write down the top 30 to 50 romantic things that you guys have ever done together. Now, these aren't just the big things of going to Hawaii or Aruba. Just anything where she felt special because you do that. So have your wife write down the top 30 to 50, and then you go and break those down based off love languages. And then you go ahead and put it in a calendar. You can use Excel, you can use Microsoft Outlook, you can find an app, but you literally do these things two, three times a week or once a month or once a quarter, once every six months. Like my wife and I, you know, we do the 777 plan. And the 777 plan is every seven days we go on a date. Okay, one on one time. We actually try to do it twice a week. Okay, That's twice awesome. a week we do that. But then every seven months you do a weekend. Okay, a weekend just you guys going out. And then every seven years you go on a big trip. And so I actually do it every five years. You know, I've taken my wife to Aruba, to a cruise, um, to Hawaii. I took her to last time for our 20th anniversary. We went to uh, Rome and Paris. Wow. But you go ahead and do this so you have lifelong memory. But again, have a plan. You are going to fail in the business world if you don't have a plan, yep. right? If you just, well, whatever comes to my mind, we're going to, you know, I'm going to go do Facebook ads, whatever. No, no, you're going to fail. <laughs> you got to have a romance plan, a creativity plan for your spouse. And so my wife, because I've done so many things, I'm always trying to surprise her, right? I'm always trying to outdo myself, but because we have all human brains, it's okay to bring back things that you did three years ago or six ago. Go ahead and rehash those things. So I can't encourage you guys enough. Do the 30 to 50 things. Your wife's going to write those things down. And then with that, I actually tell guys, yeah, you need to go ahead and laminate that. Go ahead and laminate that little cheat sheet. And I have mine in my sock drawer. So because it's something I look at, right? If I keep it on the computer, it might get lost. But then you literally pull that thing out because sometimes we get in a ditch. Even when you are the ro most romantic person in your zip code, you're still going to forget sometimes. You pull out that cheat sheet. And you're like, oh, I need to do that. You need to re-engage your, your calendar again. So those are a few of the things that we have done. Um, like this morning, this morning, um, actually last night I went out late. My wife, uh, she has a minivan and I went out and filled up her van. I put a little um, card on the dashboard. So when she woke up this morning, um, she was taking the kids to soccer practice. Uh, she sent me a picture, sent me a selfie, holding a little card and just said, thank you so much for loving me. That's so amazing. Yeah. It's those little things. That's what I little found stuff. is that, you know, you can buy flowers or what, what all this big stuff and make it a big presentation. But, but my wife actually likes more a handwritten note or just something that like a, a, a little 10 second video of me just saying, I, I appreciate all that you do. And I see all that you do. And I love you so much for it. You know, like those little things matter so much. I feel like Absolutely. I love how you said that you're, you're kind of like the CEO of that. I, I, I've thought that in my head before about my own business, about my poker career you know, have certain rules for poker. Like I don't play if I've drank the night before, if I'm hungover, if I'm tired or, you know, I have all these rules. And I, I'm, I've court, I always tell myself I'm the CEO of that company. Mm. I like that mindset shift too, of, Hey, I'm the CEO of this relationship. I need to more plan these things out. Right. I, I kind of intuitively, I have like a once a month thing on my calendar where I want to write my wife a love note. And I want to try and send her a video every month and do some of these things. But I really like how you 
sketch that out and kind of have these go-to things there. I'm, I'm going to implement that from you, Heath. I love that, man. Awesome. <laughs> and then, uh, you, oh, go ahead. Well, it, just along with this, I, when it comes to intimacy, specifically sexual intimacy, you as the man, you are responsible to inspire your wife towards sexual intimacy. And so if you don't like what you're receiving from your spouse, don't blame it on estrogen. Don't blame it on menopause, whenever she's going to go through that. Don't blame it on being tired, fatigue, kids. Those are all realities, but don't blame it on that. And so you, you're, again, you're the inspirer, you're the thermostat. And so you got to figure out if she does get tired and my wife gets tired and when women get tired, they're not going to respond to your pursuit. So what can you do in the household? Again, if you got young kids, Tyler, I know you got young kids, you got to yeah. do more of the diapers. That's right. Or oh, you got to do more of this or whatever it is. Right. <laughs> what are you going to do to inspire her so that when you do pursue her sexually, she wants to say yes to that? Okay. Mm. So we're getting right now in the country, the average married couple has uh, intimacy about twice a week. When I heard those statistics, when I first got married, I'm like, uh, that's not heaven on earth. Okay? <laughs> that, that's not what I'm looking forward to uh, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. And yeah. So my wife and I, we're, we're in our upper 40s. And we have that kind of intimacy four to five times a week. And the reason we have it four to five times a week is my wife, she's drawn to me that way, but she knows I'm more interested in that than she is, but she is a servant wife and I'm a servant husband. And so we literally try to outserve each other. And when you try to outserve each other, you have this mar marital dance, all right, that the man is leading, the woman's responding. I'm making it easy for her to want to respond to me that way because I'm inspiring her. How am I inspiring her? Can you just talk about it? Love note, leaving a video, doing little things for her, still pulling the, the uh, chair out when you're eating dinner together, still opening that car door. I'm literally making her feel like a queen and I'm the king and I'm leading this whole thing. And then she loves to follow me because she feels number one. Wow. That, that's a powerful image right there, man. And yeah, that's my wife and I called it the crazy cycle when we were on the other side of it where... Mm. I would say negative things to her, which would make her say negative things to me, which would call and we'd go around and around. Right. And I'd complain about my day. Then she'd complain about hers. Yep. And, and I did notice what you mentioned that, that guys are the thermostat. And, and, I, and I've seen that very, very clearly. And as the more guys I talk to too, that say women have this magical gift. It's so powerful that they can kind of take our energy and magnify it back like a hundredfold. Mm. Right. So I kind of made that decision to stop complaining about work, to, to always yes. encourage her to give life, to try and, you mentioned earlier that that tip was one of the best tips I think any guy could have is on your commute home. I started doing this a couple of years ago and it was my wife's idea, pull off to the side of the road. I would, I would calm myself for about one or two minutes and I would leave picture leaving work at work and picture myself bursting through that door, high energy, scooping my wife up, giving her a kiss and just having bringing energy and life into our family instead of mm. walking in the day sucked. My boss sucked. The well, well, of course she's yep. not going to want to respond to you in that way. Right. And you never yep. would have done that when you were first dating. Like when we were first dating, I never would have complained to my wife about the things that I was complaining about when we got married. And, and for some reason there's that shift there. And so I love how you say that to continue to pursue her and date her. And you always want to do that and, 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 and kind of see how, where she goes from that when you take the lead on that. Absolutely. That, that's very well said. A couple more ideas. Again, uh, if you're a if you're a board game board game family, or if you are um, cards like play cards, you know we we have we have several games that we like to play. We like to play Dominion, uh, Scategories, some other ones. And what you just do there, you just create your own little card, and you just go ahead and slip it in the deck. And so for those of you that play Scategories, there's usually about 12 questions on there. You roll the dice. You know, if it's R, you got to write the answer. You just go ahead and write, put a little card there that are applicable to your family. You drop it in there. It's like the third time that you go around, it has something to do with you and your wife. So if you're playing each other, it's fun. But as your kids get a little bit older, it's humorous for them. But it's all about your wife or places that you've gone. That's or again, awesome. playing, playing cards. You play cards with your wife. You know, whatever game comes up could be poker. But then at the, <laughs> end, of that, at the end of that night, she goes to bed. You go in. My, my wife wake, wakes up earlier than me. When she wakes up early in the morning, you have it there on the table. It says, I love you. I with you in the cards. You know, it's just awesome. these little creative things that you already do, but you go and make it. So she can see that, man, now let me, I'll just finish with this, with this segment. Your wife is, um, women struggle more with anxiety and fear than guys do. Hmm. And so one inherent 
a fear that ladies have is, is my husband going to love me as my body ages? Is he going to leave me? If you are Mr. Romance in the household, that fear is gone. She never has to have that fear because you are all about her. Again, women often have body images. If you are just overwhelming her with compliments, if you're talking about specific parts of her body that she struggles with, man, then when you are being intimate, she has no challenges because she doesn't have any fear because you are overwhelming her with romance. So if you want to help her get rid of anxiety in her life, man, be Mr. Romance. She won't struggle with that. She'll fear other stuff, but she won't have to worry about you leaving her or having challenges with her when she gets into her 40s, 50s, 60s, and so forth. I love that, man. Yeah, I really love that. And a big shift for me was was telling my wife, you're the only person I'm ever going to look at. Like mm-hmm. ridding myself of, of any kind of pornography many years back and things like that was it's yeah. a big shift. And now like she knows or, or, about 10 minutes ago on the podcast, she's taking a shower over there. And that's, that's why my attention waned for a second. You're just, you're just I, I can't, I, I can't not look, man. It's right there and it's beautiful, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about the card games real quick. And then I do want to yes. hit another point, but uh, my wife and I do play cards a lot together. We played board games as a family. That, that's a pretty big thing. We haven't done TV in like 28 months. So wow. that, that was one big shift we made because we used to watch a show together and I feel like that that just wasn't good. We would both sit there mm. on our phone and not communicate. And so we, we kind of talked about what better ways we wanted to do that. So one of the first times we played Uno together, I got really mad that she beat me and, and I, I pouted about it. <laughs> and it, she still makes fun of me to this day, like <laughs> over two and a half years later, like I'm never playing Uno with you again. You're too competitive. But yeah, I've tried to turn that corner and just make it more fun and like it. Not such a cutthroat game, but, but a good a good time. <laughs> I, I struggle with that too. I'm very competitive. Yeah. I'm like, it's just a game. <laughs> right. Just a game. The point is to just connect, not to win and yeah. crush. Like you just, you just want to connect and laugh and have a good time. But one thing I want to touch back to too, because I think it yeah. is a big thing that held me back for a while and a lot of other guys is that love languages. Mm. Um, you know, my, my love language was, was physical touch and acts of service. Um, and, and words of affirmation in there too. And so a lot of times my wife is just so much quality time. She, she would want to spend time, but I would go vacuum, vacuum out her car, you know, or I, I would mm-hmm. like, you know, maybe, maybe wipe down the dishes or something, which were helpful. She likes that, but she would rather just have time with me. And so until we took that test and really understood that, yes. we, we were kind of speaking a different language and, and unable to kind of know what, what, how we could show, best show each other love. So can you kind of talk to, to other men about that and how they could go about discovering that and why that's so important? Yeah. So you, you can go to Gary Chapman's website. Gary Chapman's got the quiz for the five love languages. It's totally free. You can have your wife take that. Um, you go ahead and take it. And you might want to have her take it again. Maybe she took it 20 years ago and she might be different today. But again, once she um, takes that, have her go and email to you um, where it's located as far as one through five. And then once you get that, yeah, I'm going to go back to that romance uh, calendar, romance schedule. You just go ahead and focus on that. Now, because my wife is so much, you know, quality time, she's okay if I just did that because she's <laughs> such an awesome woman. That would fill up her love tank. But again, I'm not, I'm not going to have an av- average marriage. <laughs> you know, I want it to be remarkable. And so you guys, again, whether it is the acts of service, you know, where she loves it when you um, give her, you know, foot massage or you go and clean the bathroom. That's just what you decide to do. But um, the more that you do that, the more that she'll be drawn to you, the more that she'll respond to you because you are saying, I love you in that way. I mean, Tyler, I'm the same way. My number one is physical touch. And so my wife could care less about a neck massage. I mean, she doesn't even think that way, <laughs> but I, I love a neck massage, right? I love when that happens. And so she sometimes says, oh, I should be doing that more, you know, for you because that's your, but again, we forget. So we're walking in grace. We're always walking in grace, not expectations, but because we try to outserve each other, we try to figure out where you're at. Final thing with the love language is um, every, every Sunday afternoon, my wife and I have a meeting and we talk through our finances. We talk through other things, but um, one, of the, one of the questions there, hey, how am I doing loving you? The way that God made you to be loved. You know, well, how am I doing there? Is there anything that you're lacking that you feel I need to give you more of? And that's just an honest time where, I mean, I speak to my wife, she speaks to me because we are constantly trying to grow. I mean, I, as far as the image of marriage, I try to tell people a couple is like two boats on the ocean. And if you had two boats on the ocean, they're naturally going to go apart and they naturally going to go apart 
kid struggles, money struggles, health struggles. You're naturally going to go apart unless you row back towards each other. And you row back towards each other, communication, love language, romance, intimacy. You have to keep doing this because the world has all kinds of things to distract you and to pull you apart. And that makes a lot of sense why, why divorce is so high when you, when you kind of describe it that way. Because, and I kind of saw it in my own, again, I think a lot mm-hmm. of men fall into that trap of, well, I got her. Nope. <laughs> and and nope. I, can kind of, I can kind of pump the brakes. I can kind of stop from there. But yeah, we do kind of naturally grow apart. I mean, when I look back to the first couple of years of our marriage before I was trying to put my wife first and really trying to pursue her and, and get to know her. And, you know, it, the cool thing is when you, when you start dating again, you know, and I remember just telling my wife after a few years when it was pretty bad, like, I'm going to start dating you again. I want to get to know you. I want to hear funny stories yeah. from you. I just want to keep getting to know you. I want to keep peeling back little layers, you know, and it's so fun. Once you really start that, it's like, I mean, me and my wife were joking. We were on a walk just last night. Uh, we had, you know, sit her for a couple hours and we said, you yeah. know, we have a big date coming up on, on Sunday. And we said, you know, sometimes it's like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday during the week. And it's been a hard week. We have three one-year-olds and, and, you know, we've changed, you know, maybe 70 poopy diapers by that point. <laughs> and we say, you know, that big date gets us through that week. We just can't, mm. we cannot wait to connect with each other that week, just to have some time where we just get to laugh and hang out and plan, I'll plan something fun, you know? But yes. I think when you have that kind of on fire marriage where she really is my, my best friend now, I love our time together. I cherish it. It, it, it makes every other aspect of your life better. Um, you know, I was kind of winning at work and winning at money and winning at friendships and other things, but I was losing at my marriage and I felt like I was losing at everything. And I feel like that's the biggest piece in a guy's life. If you know you're respected and loved and cherished by your wife and, and the only way you can get that is by giving that first, right? Yep. It kind of makes everything else better. Do you agree with that? hundred percent. And I, yeah, even the, the three one-year-olds you have, every <laughs> married guy listening to this, you have to realize that your kids are going to a daily marriage conference mm. and that marriage conference they're going to is your conference. They are seeing you, how you talk about your wife. They're seeing you if you're actively listening. They're seeing you if you're on the phone when your wife is talking to you. They're seeing you sleeping on the couch and not doing anything. They're seeing you how you take mom out. They're seeing you taking her out for a weekend. They're seeing you asking for forgiveness. Okay, mm-hmm. if you give a sharp word or whatever. They are, they are literally in a marriage conference every day. And so when they leave the home, you know, 18, 19, 20, whatever age, they are going to take whatever they learned that marriage conference into their relationship. And so I just can't tell you guys enough. You got to figure it out. Okay. You got to get the mentors. You got to listen to guys like Tyler and seeing what he's doing. He usually doesn't have a shirt on, but you see what he's doing there as far as with his wife. So I, I love that. But yes, you got to be all, all in. And I you know marriage, marriage is so simple, but it's not always easy. Yeah. It's so simple. If you do like these five or 10 things, you'll have a world-class marriage. The problem you're reacting with is the selfishness, right? If you went on a weekly date, if you went on a weekly, you know, going to the park with her, if you laugh together, if you had the romance together, the intimacy, if you do all these things, it is so simple. But again, you have all these bad ideas, these bad images that you've allowed in your head or the way that your parents mentored you growing up. You saw that marriage conference every time. But if you will figure this stuff out, marriage is so sweet. I mean, it's just amazing. It's just wonderful. I mean, my wife is my best friend too. I love being around her. My wife um, builds me up. She respects me. She speaks validating words. The only time that I don't feel validated, and um, one of my favorite quotes is there has to come a time where the boy sits down and the man stands up. And so it's when the boy comes out of me. It's when I am pursuing my wife for sexual intimacy. And she just says, hey, I'm really tired tonight. Can we wait till tomorrow? And that I feel like rejection, even though I honor her with her tiredness, her exhaust. Of course she is tired. I mean, she homeschools our kids. So of course she's tired. Of course she's overwhelmed. But I feel that rejection there. But I understand it's just a feeling. This thing is going to pass. I recognize it. I don't dwell on it. I let that go. That's not who she is. Again, she's drawn to me. She's attracted to me. She's just tired. So don't allow when your wife is not admiring you, when she forgets to compliment you. You know, Tyler, when Tyler says, man, this many people are listening to my stuff, this many people, you say, oh, okay, hey, can we talk about, let that go. Because yeah. you're not always going to feel admired and allow her to be that human where she's not always googly eye towards you. Okay, she's got other stuff going on in her head, but you give her the grace 
to say no to you at times when it comes to intimacy. You give her the grace to not be treating like a superhero, right? She, you're just another guy because she needs to take care of the kids. The kids are they're, they're doing their things. So again, the more grace you walk with each other there, you're not going to have these expectations. They got to do this, got to do this again. You just love that they are part of your life. That, that is such a great point, I think. And, and a lot of guys I will talk to, and, and of course, for me too, you know, you do even, even after, you know, years and years of marriage, you can feel that rejection sometimes. And so oh, yeah. I remember journaling at one point to myself, um, I'm always going to give my wife the benefit of the doubt because I know she loves me. And, and then I'll say a big, a big shift for me, Heath, is now I've been working from home now for, for about a year. Mm. Brother, this has been so eye-opening because to see what she does every day that I had no idea and I just took for granted for all these years. I mean, dude, the, yes. the, the schedules, the kids things, the doctor's appointments, the there is a million making the lunches, making the breakfast, making the meal, meal prep. It's just, I could list a thousand things that she did every day that yes. I didn't know. And then sometimes I'd come home from work and I'd think, well, I can just give her a compliment and get her in the mood, you know, mm -hmm. dude, she's her head is in a million different spots. She's put out 57 fires that I've, I haven't seen with the kids and all these things. And so I love how you said that is to, to not have that expectation or hold that against them. Right. Oh yes. Yeah. I think that that's a really powerful thing that all guys need to realize is, is, mm. you know what the, the women do a lot, a lot every single day. And so, you know, to have those kind of expectations is pretty unrealistic. Right. Absolutely. Um, now, when it comes to expectations, though, one of the detrimental parts of a marriage is unspoken expectations. So if you do have things in your life that you feel you need fulfilled, your wife should feel the same way to be able to speak those to you. Because when you have unmet expectations, those things start gnawing on you. I mean, I was talking to one of my clients last night. This guy is in his 60s and his wife has um, left him. She's in an apartment. She's already filed papers for divorce. And he had no idea that the things that she used to bring up to him was such a big deal. I mean, he's like, I've been a jerk. I've been cold to her. She used to bring up things like this to him. She used to like to drive around the countryside with him. He didn't want to drive because it was a waste of time, gas money. And so he said no to her a lot. She used to um, read the Bible and she would ask him sometimes, hey, do you want to read together? And he already goes to church. He's already part of a men's Bible study. So he didn't get involved in that. She used to say, hey, you want to go to the coffee shop? He doesn't like coffee. He would say no to that. Man, he just wishes he would have went to the coffee shop and got water. He wishes he would have not went out to eat. And yeah, let's go for a drive and change out the gas money. It's too late, though. Her heart is totally gone from him. And so, guys, your wife tries to bring up these hints to you. Hey, could you help with the kids? Would you mind helping tucking them in? Mom, or, honey, I'm watching the game right now. The game's almost over. Do you say these kinds of things? Yeah. Remember, it might not separate you in the first 18 months, 36 months, three, 40 years, but 20 years of you saying no, irritable, you're going to be annoying to her. And then again, you wonder why your intimacy is not close to her. Again, women can remember things that happened on December, December 7th, 2011. <laughs> when you said this, you said no. And you want to make it easy for her to live with you. And so again, sit that boy down, get the man a responsibility to stand up. So that, again, that you inspire her to want to be married to you for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. And again, not go to the commitment. It's not about the commitment, but that's enjoyable, that you guys are a team. You guys are working together. You guys are pushing each other further than you ever could being single. That's awesome, man. Yeah, my dad's funny about that. He says he, he made a couple of mistakes early in their marriage and, and they've been married coming up on 46 years now. And he, he jokes it. all the time. Love it. She'll never let me forget 45 yeah. years ago in 19 days, I did this thing, you know, <laughs> he says oh, yeah. that women never forget, but yeah, I do love that, man. One big thing for me that, that I struggled with early that I think some other guys probably could think about, and this won't be a popular thing to say, but you mentioned the games on mm -hmm. brother. I, I, I used to talk all the time. Oh man. I, I love that. That LeBron and his teammates have great communication. That's why they're so successful. I didn't think that me and my wife weren't successful because we didn't have the same communication. I put more energy and effort into knowing my sports teams, knowing my games. And, you know, for me, that's been a big shift of, you know, I'll still watch highlights some nights or, or mm -hmm. see, but I'm not going to sit down and, and watch a three hour game. I'm just not going to do that. Like I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell my wife, yeah, we have limited time, but I, I prioritize this game over you, you know, like I'm always going to choose to go do something with her. And she knows that. And like, 
I think some guys probably need to have that kind of reality check. It's easy to say my family's the most important thing, but then do you just come home and zone out and watch sports all night or watch TV all night? And, and you really got to be mindful of that. Cause I think that's a trap we can fall into. You know, I, I fell into it for a couple of years. I, I said all the right things, but man, I knew how the Cardinals were doing. I knew their draft picks. I knew their prospects. I knew, you know, I mm. knew all these things about all these sports teams. I didn't know what my wife wanted. I didn't know my wife's love language. I didn't know that she wanted these things. And so, you know, that was a big, big shift for me and a big barrier to just kind of eliminate all that excess noise. Uh, and that, that sort of was a big turning point to make us a lot more successful. Man, again, guys don't want to go there. All right. <laughs> guys don't want to go there because again, this is their time. This is what they want. So I, I gave up playing video games when I was 20 years old. I stopped doing it. But during our first year of marriage, I won this Microsoft gift package. It was $250. And so I bought a new keyboard. I got a new mouse, whatever. Back then it was like a wireless mouse, which was a big deal. And then I bought Age of Empires because I had heard about this game. I remember I bought it and I put it on the computer and I started playing it. And one time, I don't remember how long, whether it was two, three, four hours, and my brand new bride we'd been married like two months. She came into the little uh, lobby, little study we had. And she's like, is this why you wanted to get married? So you play Age of Empires? <laughs> well, it's like and I looked at the beauty. I literally <laughs> took out the disc and threw it away. Wow. I threw it away. Because again, I didn't want to spend hours perfecting Age of Empires and you know leveling up. Totally got rid of it. And um, so I, I don't play video games because it's a waste of time. And I was addicted to video games throughout my teenage year, right? Hundreds of hours. Yeah. So again, there's a balance here. And then the balance is like with my kids, the only game I play with them is Mario Kart. And we do that as a connection time. We do it as a fun time. When it comes to sports, my son, uh, we watch football together, but we have our TV ends after the Super Bowl. But we do the same thing. We don't watch more than one game a week because we want to go play disc golf. We want to go play soccer. We want to go outside and do this stuff. But yeah, if you are spending an ungodly amount of time on any screen, remember the enemy wants to totally get you distracted from discipling your family, and he wants you to get you addicted to any kind of screen. But ask your wife, my, my wife, she's okay with the football because my son and I are connecting, right? We're doing it there together. And my son played football when he was in school. So he, he likes that, but there's a purpose for it. There's a reason for it. It's not some mindless thing that you're watching three games on Sunday, you're watching Sports Center Saturday night, you never leave the two, and you're like, hey, babe, you wanna go upstairs? You wanna go connect? And of course, she's gonna think, no, what are you talking about? So what, you're connecting to a Sports Center, you're not connecting with me. So again, it's one more thing. If you're not getting that intimacy that you want, what are you putting into your spouse? You know, are you inspiring or not? For me, it's just so simple. If I can rev up my wife through the day, she wants to rev me up at night. <laughs> all right. I mean, it's just so simple to us. And my wife, again, we just know how we work together. And we both are servant husband, servant wife, and we love to serve one another. That's awesome, man. I love that. Yeah. There, there's always a cost, I think, to, to winning. And, and I've, I've really realized that over the last few years of self-improvement, where, where if I want to win at a certain area of my life, right? Like I, I want to win at faith. I have a big faith and that's a very important thing. That means less time, you know, mindlessly watching alien videos on YouTube, which I enjoy sometimes or going down yeah. these rabbit holes, right? Like I, I got to watch sermons. I got to read the Bible. I, I got to do some of these things, which means cutting out other things. And if you want to have a world-class marriage, as you say, mm. it's going to require something. You, you're going to have to leave something out. One of the wisest guys I ever talked to told me, you know, you can't win at all three things. You can win it at work, your family and hobbies. You got to pick two out of three of those things because you won't be successful at all of them. And I kind of found that true. Like, you know, for a long time, I, I prioritized work and my friends and hobbies and did my stuff and my family suffered. And, and now I've kind of given that up and said, you know what, I'm going to win at my family and I'm going to win at work. And, and, you know, when my friends can come join us for a family walk or for a hike or meet me at the gym, that's cool. But I, I'm just going to prioritize the things that take me in the direction I want to go for my life. And I think there's always a cost to it. And I kind of like how you said that, but it's different Man, for everybody too. That's total wisdom. You cannot have it all. Yeah. I'm the same way. You can't, you can't have it all. And yeah. so I grew up golfing. I used to love to golf. <laughs> same. I golf twice a year right now with my son. Hmm. I mean, that's it. I, I gave up golfing because yep. I was not going to become buddy buddies with my guy friends and take three or four hours doing that a few times a week. 
Yep. That was not, when, you know, on my deathbed, I was not going to say, man, I wish I had lowered my handicap, you know, down to this. So I just totally gave it up. But now again, once your kids get older, you can incorporate them and do stuff with them. You know, again, as your kids get older, they're going to do different sports. You can be the coach. I, I was coaching many of my kids' teams. That's and awesome. I was doing that together with them. Yeah. But yeah, powerful. You can't have it all. I mean, don't get fired by your spouse. Don't get fired by your kids. Yeah. And your kids will fire you in different ways if you are not making them number one in your life. Yeah, I, I got really addicted to golf before I met my wife and I was playing six days a week, 18 holes. I got a, I got a swing coach. I took lessons. I, I was yeah. really into it. I was I was down to like a six, seven, eight handicap. And then, you know, we had our first daughter and I remember selling my clubs when she was three months old. And I, and I told my wife, I, I don't want to spend four hours with away like every week and you know, a couple of times yeah. a week and do this. And I told her, I'll pick it back up. You know, maybe our kids get into it at some point and I'll yeah. play with them or maybe when they all leave someday and we're retired, we can go do it. But, but again, yeah, everything has that cost, you know, Absolutely. I, I want to shift gears here a minute and, and talk about one thing. Um, you're an author uh, yeah. and I kind of want to talk about your book, my man, and, and kind of, can you run people through that and talk to us what that's about? Yeah. So again, I am, I'm, I, I'm a systematic romancer. So I am constantly creating all kinds of things for my wife. And so over the years of counseling uh, guys, they are not good at romancing their wife. They literally, again, I got married, told her I loved her. I still love her. You know, we uh, have dinner together. They're, they're good guys, but they do not know how to stimulate. They don't know how to woo her. And so I put in this, the ultimate romantic week, 49 different ideas, 49 tips that will give her the most remarkable week in her life where literally your wife will be um, living off this for weeks and months that when she gets around her girlfriends and they're talking about their husband, the slob, and he doesn't do this. And he's like this, that she'll be like, man, you guys, you wouldn't believe what my husband just did. <laughs> and so it is like, it touches every sense, every sense of your spouse. And for guys that say, I mean, I don't, I don't even, I don't celebrate Valentine's day. It's just a moneymaker. And I, I'm celebrating her all year. Those kind of guys just ask me, Hey, do you ever go on vacation? <laughs> yeah, you, you go on vacation. Why do you go on vacation to get away, have a special moment, celebrate, go to the beach or the mountains or whatever. That's what this week is. So again, it's designed for eight days. There's five different parts of it. It tells you exactly what to do. And your wife, by the end of the week, she'll feel like she's the, she's around the most romantic man in her zip code. Absolutely. I mean, it'll totally change your relationship. So if you need some adrenaline put in your marriage, that's for you. If you feel like you have grown apart, and you are no longer close like you used to be, it's for you. If your intimate life right now is non-existent, you know, it's one time a month or whatever, this is for you. If you realize right now that you are given a poor model, poor example to your children, this is for you. I mean, my kids, I'm taking my wife through it right now. And of course I created it, but I'm doing it right now. So last night, my wife and I, we made chocolate covered strawberries. Okay. So we made those together and then we were feeding each other. Okay, most of you guys have not fed your wife since you got married as far as the wedding cake. Yeah. Probably the last time you did that. When you do food stuff, it's sensual. Yeah. All right, it's just totally sensual connection. Again, one of the things in here is to redo your room and you put a message on top of your the bed, on the ceiling. So every time that your wife goes to bed, she sees your affirmation. So some of the guys that are going through this, one guy put, you know, you were the, you were the, um, the light of my world. Another guy says, you know, um, you're, you're my lover. Another guy says, I can't stop thinking about you. you know, just different message there. Yeah. Every night when the lights go out, boom, constant message. That's he awesome. cares about me. He's making me number one. And so for those of you guys that are listening to this, you can do it anytime. I mean, it's designed for Valentine's week, but you can do it the last week of February. And so I encourage you guys to go to my um, Twitter, Twitter on Facebook. And I'll, um, link, I'll link all this below. Oh, great. I'll link you your book. Go ahead and, 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 and look at the link. But um, this is for guys that want to be remarkable. Again, if you're the kind of guy, I'm cheap, it's not worth it. That's not for you. This is for a guy that wants to make his marriage number one and wants his wife to know that you're my beauty. I can't stop thinking about you. So that's what, that's what that resource is. Any other questions about that? I'm happy to answer. That's awesome, man. I love that. Yeah, I'm, I'm really anxious to get started and go through that too. I've talked to my wife about it already and said, uh, yeah. you, you, got, you got some cool stuff coming up. So I appreciate that, man. And yeah, we'll link all that stuff below too. Awesome. Uh, man, Heath, I feel like I could just chat here. I, I looked over 45 minutes in and I feel like I could chat with it. I feel like it's been about 10 minutes, man. But uh, 
I hit this point in the pod where I always go to five rapid fire questions, man. Are you down yeah. for five rapid fire questions? Just absolutely the first thing that comes off the top of your head, man. Okay. Right. What's the best, most impactful book outside of the Bible that you've ever read? Man, I, that's another thing. I encourage you guys to read books. Um, I'm going to say Cherish by Gary Thomas. I've never heard of that one. Man, if you will cherish, just I, I love that word, cherish. Yeah. But it is all about taking care of, being around her, treating her like you want her to win, being tender, leadership, being cherished by Gary Thomas. I, I'm writing that down, man. I'm gonna, we go to the library like every few weeks as a family. So that's going to be my next book, man. I appreciate awesome. it. <laughs> Thanks, awesome. Thanks, brother. Uh, what's your best date idea for maybe a guy who, eh, they got a lot of kids, they're busy, you know, the, the kids go to bed and maybe it can't be a big special thing, but what's something you'd recommend to just kind of make something special, even if it's for 15, 30 minutes after the kids go to bed some night? Uh, do couch time, sit down, on, sit down on the couch with your wife, turn off the TV, put phones on the table and you literally just connect right there. Okay. What's, what's been your best part of the day, your worst part of the day. Uh, right now on a scale of one to 10, what do you feel our marriage is at right now? When it comes to our kids, scale of one to 10, where do you feel like we're at right now? And then man, spend some time complimenting her. I, mean, I just want to let you know that I have seen the hard work that you've done in the household, specifically making the meals, specifically vacuuming, specifically working, specifically managing the money, whatever it is, yeah. man, just let her feel that fresh water from her husband flowing over her. That's huge. Yeah. My wife and I talk about our buckets and that we try and fill each other's bucket all the time because mm. everybody else is taking from that bucket, right? Your kids are constantly taking from your bucket, your job, your clients, everything else taking from that bucket. And so we always want to try and be filling each other's back up. I, I love that, love man. It. That's great tip. Yes. Um, what's the one number one common misconception you think that guys do wrong or think about marriage wrong? Uh, that it's okay to be average. Mm. It's okay to have a dad bod. <laughs> it's okay not to lead the finances. I mean, I read this book when I was 18, 19. It was called Sex, Money, and Communication. The three main reasons why marriages go kaput. That their, their wife is okay with you getting older, but not getting better. Mm -hmm. In any, any other area of life in the business, you better get better or you'll be fired. In That's the right. Olympics, you get better. You won't go to the Olympics. That guys just think it's okay to just coast. Mm -hmm. And their, their wife's going to be okay with it. And because they're around a lot of average people, you know, another one of my favorite quotes is to be a man, you got to see a man. And I'm talking about a world-class man. If you see an average man, that's what you're going to become. And so guys just think it's okay to be average instead of manning up. I mean, that phrase manning up, take on responsibility. You are in charge of your life. You're in charge of your marriage. Make it unbelievable. You make it purple cow where people walk by like, whoa, what's going on here? I mean, you need to become a husband heir, a father and heir. Or people like, how did you, instead of making all this money, how'd you do this? People should be asking you these kinds of things. They should see how your wife is so different, so full of peace, so beautiful. And again, guys like me, whenever I see a woman like that, I'm like, man, that's her husband. Her husband must be doing something to create that aura, to create that vibrancy on the inside of her. I mean, Tyler, you put a few pictures of your wife there and I'm like, man, he's doing it. I can just see the glow from her. And yes, she's in charge of her own life but you're the soil that's giving her the nutrients so that she can bloom. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful, like she builds me up every single day. I feel like I try my best built her up every single day too. It's a beautiful thing, man. Like I always say that I feel like I can slay dragons, man. When I know yeah. she's on my side in my corner, when she's with me, man, like ride or die, like it's, it, there's no challenge too high when I feel like she has my back. And, and I hope that's the same for her and that I instill that in her too. You know, Hey, if we're together, we can conquer anything, you know? Yes. I love that, man. Um, What's a few little easy wins men can do to just kind of move that needle on the romance? Like, let's say a guy's been married for a decade or so. And he's like, look, we're in that once a year birthday time. Like I, I, I have no romance in my life. How do, how do I start to move that needle a little bit? What would be the best few tips you can give them? Go back to what you first did. So whatever you did when you first started dating her, when you first start wooing her, do those things again. Again, are you still talking to her in a nice voice or have you gotten into a barking voice? Do you still say, please, thank you? Or you're like, hey, can you, are you treating her like an employee compared to a teenager, right? Where you guys were teenagers together, maybe in early 20s, and you just loved each other. Man, and then be inspired. Again, like when I watch James Bond, okay, I love the James Bond movie. When I see him, like, man, I got to up my style. I got to up my style because I'm a casual guy. I'm just good with shorts and a t-shirt. But my wife appreciates when we're, I'm taking her out that I amp up. 
Okay. So get inspired by people that you make, man, I want, I want to grow in that way. Another thing is start asking a married guys that you think are good marriages. Hey, what's something you've done recently with your spouse? What's like the newest thing that you've done or something old you brought back? Pretty much have a podcast with other married guys that you're around. Okay. That's awesome. Again, if they start complaining, start disparaging their wife, whatever, don't ask them again, go find somebody else and learn from them. I mean, most of my ideas I've stolen from other people, <laughs> right? I've stolen from other, I've heard about that and I've made it part of my marriage. Yep. That, that's with everything. I'm pretty successful in life. I mean, the reason I've made a lot of money in poker is because I studied better poker players than me and got inside their head and learned from them. You know, the yes. reason I'm pretty decent at the gym is because I've hung around people that are, were a lot stronger than me and better at the gym. It makes sense in a marriage. If you want to have an on fire, great marriage, that's why I wanted you to come back, Keith, because you know, you were just yeah. on for the 10 minutes or so before, and you were talking and all of us guys, our eyes just lit up and we're like, holy cow, man, you're dropping a ton of wisdom. So I appreciate you being in that corner too and sharing with all of us today, man. Thank yes. you. Uh, last question, man. What's, what's some of the future plans? Um, you know, again, I'm going to link your book below. I'm going to link your Twitter below. Any, anything else, maybe tell people where we can find you and give us, give us kind of where you're going to be, you know, in the future here, Heath. So I've, uh, again, I've been teaching 25 years, leading guys and so forth. I am um, putting most of my wisdom into downloadable resources. So my next resource is going to be the year of becoming a man. It's a 12 month rite of passage for fathers to go through with their son for boys that are ages 10 to 15. So that'll be um, unleashed on June 1st. In October, I'm gonna come out with epic legendary bachelor parties that are PG. <laughs> I have been part of a number of bachelor parties that are literally just boring. And so these are world-class, unbelievable, remarkable, there's gonna be eight to 10. Those are gonna be coming out in October. And then next June, uh, January 1st, I'm gonna be coming out with the year of becoming a woman. This is also a 12 month rite of passage to take your daughters from becoming a girl to becoming a woman. And it's, it's 12 months, it's theme based, activity based. There's 360 questions that you will be able to ask your daughter that she'll be able to look back at that year and say, that's the year I became a woman. And for, the, for your son, that's the year that I became a man. So those will be coming out in the next year. That's awesome, man. I can't wait. Maybe we can have you back on at some point and, and talk more about those, man. I, I really appreciate you coming on, Heath, dropping so much wisdom with us. I think, uh, you know, just as a guy, again, who's been on both sides of this, not in a great marriage and, and feeling defeated. And like I was on eggshells and, and every day was, was, a, was a struggle to kind of getting on that other side. I would urge every guy out there to apply. Don't just listen to what Heath is saying here, but apply a lot of his wisdom and do a lot of these things and create that better marriage for yourself. It, it, guys, it will improve every area of your life. That's right. Yeah, well, thank you for getting for coming on. This has been Ty Roffers No Limit Podcast, episode number 22. We got the man, the myth, the legend, Heath on here. Appreciate you sharing the wisdom. You guys go do something nice for your wife today. I'm fired up now. I want to write her a letter. I'm going to do some fun things for her today, man. So I appreciate you inspiring me, brother. Thank you guys so much and go have the best day.